Welcome to the Tech Insider, where we talk to the people who can give you the insights and trends that matter to you in your business. I'm Christine Grail with Like a Geosystems. In July, Like a Geosystems announced several new field controllers. So we are going to talk about those today. I'm so excited to have Burke AC on our program today. Burke is the product manager for surveying and engineering in the US and Canada for Leica Geosystems. Welcome to the program, Burke. Hi, Christy. Thanks for having me. I know we have the CS20. That is what everyone knows as Leica's field control. It's a handheld with a keypad. Everyone loves that controller because of the keypad. It's so easy to use. But now we're in this situation where we have all these really great visualizations with the Captivate software, mm -hmm. and you want to be able to see those. And so we've had some tablets. We have the CS30. Everyone likes the CS30. But again, it's, it's just the tablet. And so you have some concerns about if you're out in the weather, are you going to be able to do the work that you need to do on the screen? Um, you, you really miss that keypad. The CS20 has been the standard. It's been more than eight years since the CS20 came out. It's been the standard for field controllers uh, over its lifespan. Again, it's getting a little bit older now, but it's still a completely functional controller for your standard work. If you're going out and just measuring a few points, doing some line work, the CS20 is still a, a very reliable controller for those type of um, environments or that type of work that you're that you're doing. But when you start to get into bigger data sets and you start to want to do more with data, uh, you do need a little bit more horsepower, a little bit more performance coming from that those tablets. And and in the past, we've always been limited by, you know, you just you have a tablet, you're limited by the tablet, you just have the touch screen. Um, it, it, it doesn't lend itself to the standard surveyor kind of working mentality out in the field. They want the ability to be able to, you know, do kind of physical data entry, be able to have um, the ability to have a fallback as well. And, and now with the new GKP 100, it allows us to be able to take this, uh, uh, the, the tried and tested CS20 controller keypad that everyone has said that they've loved over the years and be able to mount it, be able to drop in the CS30, and then what you're doing now is you have a tablet, but you have that same working environment, that same familiarity you have with the CS20, and you're able to use it like you would with the CS20, but still have that additional um, processing power for larger data sets, visualization, all of the different data tasks that we would use on a day-to-day -day basis out in the field. It's one thing to hear about these new controllers and all the fantastic capabilities that they're going to bring, um, but they have to perform, right? So what what big questions or concerns did you have when you first got your hands on these? Yeah, so the big concerns that always comes up, especially with tablets, is, is touch screen performance, right? So if you're limited to only touch screen for data entry, you're 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 stuck if something goes wrong or if something happens. But now the, the GKP 100 and, and the CS30, it allows you to be able to have the fallback of using a manual data entry. Again, on the newer controllers like the CC180, uh, the touchscreen is, is very responsive. It allows you to be able to jump into um, data and, and, and visualize data very well, and it's very, very responsive. But you always want that fallback. You want to have a, a chance to be able to work with the keyboard. And, and now we have that flexibility to go um, you know, do it both ways. And that's the one thing that I kind of jump into when I when I when I do a testing that, but also you know battery life, also um, um, range for long range Bluetooth. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things that we, we we test. We just go out in the field and we we really just dive into how someone would would use it out in the field. And again, there's always you know there's always betters and bests of, of different of different tablets. Some will have better long range range than long range Bluetooth range than others. Some will have better um, touchscreen performance. But the idea uh, or the ability now is to have the choice to kind of pick the, the tablet that works for you. You know, if, if you just need a touchscreen, you're doing stakeout all day long, you know, you can just get a tablet and you can do that. If you're looking at, you know, doing data entry, a lot of data entry, we have the option for the keyboard as well. So it's really about flexibility in the testing, seeing what'll fit for each kind of group and making sure it works the way that it's expected out in the field. So we have the CS30 still, which is the seven inch tablet. We have the CC180, which is the new tablet. That's the eight inch. And then the CC20, 
200, I believe, which is a 10 inch screen for someone who's really getting into those visualizations. And the GKP works with all of them, correct? It will work with all of them. The GKP 100 really does work with kind of any tablet, right? It's really a Bluetooth keyboard that um, will attach to kind of any Windows 10, 11, kind of any other operating system and work as a keyboard. And it's been optimized for working with uh, the CS30 uh, initially with a, with a special holder. And again, later on this year, then we'll have the opportunity to use this with the CC180 and then kind of early next year with the CC200. And so it's really going to allow that flexibility and uh, uh, in data entry. All right, so you got these in hand and you took them out in the field, you put them through their paces. What did you discover? Was there anything surprising or unexpected that you encountered when you were out there with all of these? Not really surprising or unexpected. The one thing I did really, really like is with the CC180 is the speed. Um, for visualization, it's like, from the grouping from the CS30 to the uh, CC180 up to the CC200, you expect a performance boost on each level, right? So the CS30 is really good for kind of that standard working environment like the CS20. It does a little bit better with visualizations, but it, it's still, it's kind of similar type of performance as you'd see with the CS20. But jumping up to the CC180, you see a massive performance upgrade when you're dealing with very, very heavy data sets, huge IFCs, huge DWG drawings. You, 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 you don't have any kind of slowdown in processing power whatsoever. And it's nice to see that jump up um, into, that, in, into that processing power in an eight inch screen. Because sometimes the 10 inch screen can be a little bit too big for users out in the field, but the eight inch screen is kind of that, you know, Goldilocks um, um, kind of screen size that allows people to get the most from visualization, but um, still the most flexible for kind of moving around in the woods and doing all those other tasks that you might have to do while you're working out in the field. Now they have access to a much higher performance field controller. What does this do for their field work? Well, it really gives them the opportunity to work with big data sets. So if you have a whole site that you want to load into your controller, you can take that big DWG or that big DXF or that IFC or, or any of those data sets and pull it in. But it also gives you um, kind of standard Windows multitasking. If you want to work with our, our, our GeoCloud Drive products in the background or want to do other type of things, it allows that kind of uh, ability to do multitask in the Windows environment, but also work inside of Captivate. And so it really does allow a lot of flexibility there. Um, you can use it like a standard PC and you can use Captivate on top of it in the field. You don't have to do that, but it gives you that availability to do that. Whereas the CS30 is more set up for a standard Captivate user experience, you know, not adding a lot on the Windows end, just going into Captivate working there. It works really well there, but it's not the greatest with multitasking just because of the processing power. Are there any specific applications or types of projects, projects that you can think of that would be really great to have these new higher performing field controllers available? Visualizing scan data from an MS60, visualizing any type of uh, large data sets, especially BIM data or IFC data, um, being able to toggle on and off, visualize that information. Um, it really is quick, efficient, and, and it, you're not kind of waiting for the visualization to, to, to catch up like you might in the CS20, and especially on any day-to-day -day task. The day-to-day -day tasks are, are you know, even loading a job or a couple of seconds or 10 seconds quicker. So you do notice that on a day-to-day, -day and it does allow you to be able to really um, be as efficient as possible out in the field. Okay, what is the one thing that Cerbera is listening in right now need to know about these new controllers and these options? Um, again, it really has to do with um, providing a true kind of tablet experience, a, a true, you know, high performance experience with with the, you know, familiarity of a keyboard. Like I, I wasn't 100 percent sold on 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 tablets. I I was doing a lot of testing early on with CS 35s and it was the only thing that I had to do software testing and I wasn't 100% sold on tablets. I got used to it and I made it efficient. It was it was good to work with. But then you add on this keyboard and it just it feels like you're going home and you get the high speed and the power and it just gives you that familiarity of doing kind of standard data entry the way that we've always for the last, you know, 30 years um, through a QWERTY keyboard. It uh, it just allows you that same type of, of familiarity with the product. 
feels like you're going home. Fantastic. And you just, you want it to be comfortable. You don't really want the controller to be something you have to think about at the end of the day. You just want to be able to do your work and do it well. So when, when are these available? When can people get these? It's a little bit of a staggered release and it's a little bit dynamic on kind of the release dates for a few of the, a few of the items, but the GKP 100 is out now. The CC 180 in the Captivate uh, version is going to be available kind of early September, but the uh, holder for the GKP 100 probably won't be available for that at launch. It'll probably be available a little bit later in September. Um, and then the CC 200 is already out. So the CC 200 has been out since, uh, I, I believe, kind of mid June, kind of early July. So the CC 200, the 10 inch tablet, already out. Um, the GKP 100 for use with the CS 30. Uh, you know, beginning of August, end of July. So um, just in the next few days. All right. So exciting. Reach out to your rep, reach out to your dealer, see them mm -hmm. for yourself. You definitely want to take these out, give them a try. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you so much, Burke. I appreciate your time today. No problem. Thank you so much. Be sure to check out the description for additional resources on this topic. If you enjoyed this content, give us a like. If you'd like to see more of this content, be sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the Tech Insider.